the Ecclesiastes uh, uh, 10.21 in the Net Bible says, the words of a person will win him favor, but the words of a fool will cause self-destruction. How many people have said some words you wish to God you could get them back even now? Amen? All right. So we have to watch and use wisdom, choose words to speak. Uh, Proverbs 18, 20, 21 in the New Living Translation says, Wise words satisfy like a good meal. Our chosen right words bring satisfaction. The tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences negative or positively. Uh, James 3, 7 through 11 says this, People tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, even fish, but no one can tame their own tongue. I'm here to testify that that's true. It says it is a restless and evil full of deadly poison. Sometimes it pleases the Lord and Father and praises him and sometimes it curses men. How many people have found that to be true? That you can go from praising God and grateful to somebody getting the brunt of it. And you know what? You don't have to think about it. It's like automatic. It's coming out. Okay. So... And so blessings and cursings come pouring out of the same mouth that we were praising God with and glorifying God with and speaking faith. In other words, we could say out of the same mouth, we're speaking all the promises of God. We immediately start having everything that's contrary to the word of God. And he says, you know, in nature, salt water and fresh water doesn't come out the same spout. But here, blessings and curses come out the same mouth. Right. Is that right? So this today is just a little reminder. And, uh, of course, I must be first partaker. I'm aware that I have a loaded weapon here. It's got life or death. It has wealth or poverty. It has bondage or it has freedom. It has healing or it has destruction. Amen. And we have to understand that we are speaking spirits created by God to speak only that which is in agreement with him, Amen. not in, with other people or the way we feel about things. Would you say, my words are powerful? Say it again. My words are powerful. It can heal. It can destroy. Psalm 1914 in the New Living Translation says it beautifully. It says, may the words of my mouth and the train wreck of my imagination be pleasing in your sight, Lord. In other words, the Lord is looking. Uh, we had someone at one of our satellite churches said, uh, uh, do we have to have the ushers uh, uh, receiving the offering. I said, well, if you go back, Jesus did a pretty good job of standing there with the ushers, and he was not only, he was looking to see who was putting what it was in there. Would you say, I always do better always if I'm better. being watched. Being watched. Amen. Yeah. Now, the key to prosperity is in his presence is treasure evermore. Intoxicating joy, as long as we practice the presence of Jesus. How much would we really use our mouth if we really believed Jesus was standing there watching our mouth? Amen. Most of us wouldn't have much to say. Let me go over it again. Can you imagine if Jesus was watching your mouth to hear and see what comes out? how disciplined we would be. Yeah. We would probably only speak words that were in agreement with him. Yeah. Right. Amen. Now, I want you to know that the English language that I'm still learning how to speak uh, consists of about 800,000 words. There are over 300,000 technical, medical, and scientific words 
that only are used by those particular pro 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 professionals that, that know those words and need to know those words inside their particular technical disciplines. The remaining 500,000 words are words we choose to speak. We may not know the definition of all of them or the pronunciation, but we have a certain group of words that we feel comfortable with. Of these half a million words, we each average only about 10,000 that we are used to. Now think about it where we are right now. We have a limited vocabulary, and words are the most powerful thing that we can possibly do. But we don't even know the words. We don't know the meaning of the words, and we don't use the words. We just use the words that kind of in our home of origin we learned that's enough to get us by and get us through and get us over the day. That's right. Amen. And we speak them to basically the same people. Now, I got a problem. Elaine and I both taught school. When we were teaching school, I taught fifth grade. You taught children to write cursive writing. Now they don't do that anymore. Now kids don't even hold a pencil or a pen. Now they communicate with their thumbs only. Da, 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 da. And then they only they don't spell it OK, it's a K. And, and, and they, they wish you happy birthday with a, a picture of a cake with candles on it. And, uh, and everything is a smiley face or, or whatever it is. So, uh, and then their whole life is looking in a little bitty tiny screen right here. How in the hell are they going to ever communicate? Go to any restaurant today after the service and all the toddlers are sitting in their chair with their face not in the plate, looking at it, tap tapping and looking. Their whole world is three by five inches and so on. And the brain is disconnecting all of the things because it doesn't use any energy for anything. They don't speak. They don't communicate. They don't open their mouth about anything. And the parents love it because the kids don't open their mouth about anything. Now, if words are the most, most powerful thing that we have, what will the next generation be able to communicate? They can't spell. They don't need to know the definitions. And again, their vocabulary is, is down to little symbols and so on. That's just me. Most of us only use about 5,000 words repeatedly speaking to the same people, not even different people. And a lot of our communication is grunts, head nods, body language, yeah, yeah, yeah. My favorite thing is when I'm on the road, my body, my, my hand language is more important than what I say. Okay. Hoping Elaine is looking out the other window. Okay. So most of us only use about 5,000 words that we're used to that work for us to get our way and mostly to avoid anything that we want to avoid during the day and manipulate enough people in our inner circle, again, to get our way so that we feel good about ourselves. So we limit our potential greatly by not considering the power of the words that we could choose. Our chosen and spoken words can produce life or destruction Freedom or bondage, honor or dishonor. Do you realize this man right here that's been married to this woman all these years got in that situation because he said two words, I do. <laughs> and the only way he's going to get out of it if he says, I won't. <laughs> no one took a job without communicating no one ever got anything that you wanted in life without speaking words because we are created as speaking spirits and there is a potential in the words that we choose to be able to get what we want. And it can be on a carnal level or a spiritual level. The Bible is written in words. We may not know scientific words, but we know enough Greek and Hebrew words 
and translate it into our common language to be able to speak words that are in agreement with the word of God. Amen. Now, we can speak out harmful words and then claim that we didn't mean to say that. You took it wrong. I was just joking. You know that's not how I said it. But the Bible says, I'm going to give you a tongue, and that tongue is going to be the indicator of who you really are on the inside. Now, would you wave your hand at me if you've ever in your lifetime said some words that you wish to God as you were saying them you wouldn't get out? My greatest prayer is, Lord, when I talk to this person, please don't let me say what I really want to say. <laughs> Anybody ever pray that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lord, Lord if, if, if this person that's smiling at me knew what I really wanted to say to him. Now, why is that? Are you a hypocrite? No, I'm a Christian. I have to die to my natural self. Amen. But you know what God allows? For me to know what I really wanted to say so that I could recognize how much he really needed to die for the miserable person like I am. So God allows us to speak out words to let us know what our heart is really like, not to condemn us, but to convict us to be grateful for our salvation and the fact that he shows us mercy and wants to bless us if we're willing to shut up and only speak what he says. Yes. We just had a song up here. Let the poor say. Let the sick say. Let the weak say. Now, if you broke, busted, and disgusted in your week, that's a real situation to be in, right? Oh, yeah. Amen. How do you get out of it? By speaking your way out in agreement with the promises Amen. of God. Amen. Mike and Elaine have told a thousand people, yeah, your kid's in Los Angeles and you don't know where he is and he's got flowers in his hair and you don't know who he's shacked up with. Now, you can tell Aunt Harriet that. You can tell a grandma. You can complain about that. Or you can say, in Jesus' name, the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. I don't care what the circumstances is. I got a promise of God, and I'm not going to torment myself in fear and unbelief. I'm going to believe my God, and I'm going to speak it. The seed of the righteous shall be delivered. Hey, devil, shut up. I'm going to work my faith. Look at somebody say, I'm going to work my faith. Now, here's the balance again. Intellectually, I know the odds are absolutely impossible. But that's why I need to work my faith. Because with God, nothing, nothing is impossible. Well, what about, Lord, I believe you. But, Lord, forgive my unbelief. Well, you have to understand unbelief is who you really are. Sin nature doesn't want God to be God, doesn't want him to be Lord. Doesn't, the natural man wants to be as the most high and be our own Lord. So you have to say, okay, I'm going to reckon myself as dead to my natural thinking. I'm going to find me some promises. And the only thing that's coming out of this mouth is in agreement with God. Amen. And the devil is a liar. Amen. Now, once God humbles us by letting us hear our inner thoughts and our outer words, and we humble ourselves and recognize how great our salvation is, then we ask him to empower the Holy Spirit in us to give us a life that glorifies God. Now we have the only connection we can possibly have with the living God, and that is our words. Raise a hand and say, Lord, always let there be a praise on my lips. Let's say Lord, always let there be a praise on my lips. Now understand, you can have an ungrateful heart 
but you better find a way to have a praise on your lips and not see it a contradiction. Said, this is how you get liberty. You discipline and choose your words that are in agreement with God, no matter how you feel. Look, I had a thousand people. Oh, well, that's an exaggeration, but uh, that just slipped out, you see. Uh, I've had many people go, how you doing, Brother Mike? And my words are always, in Jesus' name, I'm moving towards better. I'm not going to tell you about my circumstances. Why should we both be depressed? All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to be contagious and give you a negative report. I, early this morning, one of our chief men wrote to me early, early this morning. He says, I can't be in church today. I'm very, very sick today. All right. So I wrote back, in Jesus' name, be healed. Come on. Okay. Well, I could have said, oh, well, you know, make sure you take liquids and you get a lot of rest and, you know, I understand and so on, and, you know. No, I sent a word, a word, be healed in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. All right. He wrote him back. I am in faith believing with you. I, I, I'm saying, That's wisdom, son. Amen. Okay. Or you can complain and exaggerate your circumstances and contaminate everybody else. So our God connection is we were created by God, not really to be a living soul. That's where we begin. That was the birth. But to be a speaking spirit that has direct connection to the almighty God himself through the, your ability to communicate, praise, ask, pray, speak, glorify with your mouth. Give him a shout in here. Yeah. Now, the biblical Genesis account of all creation reveals God used words as his toolbox, as his uh, media, as his equipment to take the abstract, the mind of God, and make it physical, a physical manifestation. Now, okay, last week I was ill. We, Mike and Elaine had been gone for months now. You know, my resistance was down and so on and all that, but I wasn't going to stay there. That's right. right. Okay, so it's constantly by his stripes. I'm not going to be healed. By his stripes, I am healed because at Calvary, so, I, so no matter what's running out of my nose, what's coming out of my mouth is going to be in agreement with the word of God, Amen. and I'm doing mighty good right now, okay? So the biblical account, God used the spiritual realm to manifest the abstract, the imagination of God, if so to speak, into a physical realm. Now, God as a spirit desiring to create the material spoke. He could have written it down. He could have chiseled it on a rock, but he spoke it. Amen. All right. So now we have a lot of people don't believe in a confession message because, but I don't understand how that's possible because everything that you have in your life came from you saying, I'll have another helm, pass the iced tea, uh, pass the salt. Everything that we, did, we do is to communicate it in words, an imagination becoming manifestation and being a connection to another human being to make the abstract physical in your life. Is that right? Amen. Yeah. So John 4.24, God is a spirit, and those who are going to worship him are not going to go burn a sheep. That was a type and a picture. Those that are going to communicate with God must worship in abstract spirit, spirit according to his truth. Amen. Not your truth, his truth. By his stripes, I was healed. I can have a fever but that doesn't change the confession. Amen. 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 Come on. Let the sick say. Let the poor say. Let the bound say. Look at somebody. I am a God-believing, speaking spirit. There's life and death in the power of my mouth. There's a miracle in my mouth. It doesn't have to be in your head. It doesn't have to be in your heart. It has to come out of your mouth.
but it does have to be in agreement with the promises of God. Genesis 1, 26 and 27, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness to rule in dominion. So God created man in his own image. The image of God created him. God and female, he created him because God was and is and will always be and always was a speaking spirit. Amen. Amen. Come on. If your father was a speaking spirit, now that you are born again, you are a speaking spirit, not a murmuring, whining brain. Amen. So we are created in God's image and likeness because God has creativity in his ability to speak the imagined abstract into the physical manifestation. All right, look, I, my first degree was in fine art, sculpture. Elaine would sit there when I was doing the painting, and it would look like, after a while, it, she could, it looked like a horrible mess. But in my mind, I already knew what the finished thing was going to look like. You follow that? Okay, so God already knows the beginning, the middle, and the end at the same time. So when God speaks... Now, one of our favorite scriptures I learned from Elaine when I, way in the beginning when, when she was discipling me is, whatever God speaks cannot return to him void. Right. 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 God is a king, which means the nature of a king is they use very few words because a king can never repent of any words he speaks. So God speaks, and it's going to come fruitful according to the word that he sent out, regardless of the circumstances, because he can't repent of anything he said. Is that right? All right. Now, one of the reasons he hasn't spoken to the church in over 2,000 years is he said what he needed to say. They said, don't add a word to it and don't try to take a word away from it. So everything he said has to come to pass. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his word and all the promises can't possibly pass away because the king said it. Amen. All right, now, when we say God breathed into the nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being or a living soul, now, if you stop right there in your English Bible, that's okay. But when you go back and understand in the Hebrew, it translates, and man became a speaking spirit. That's a big difference. One more time, throw that hand up in Jesus' name. I am a speaking spirit. I connect to God by the words of my mouth. Now, if you move from murmuring and complaining and whining and exaggerating in your natural circumstances to the promises of God, the supernatural can happen. Come on. Amen. Amen. Wave your hand if you know somebody who murmurs. Would you do that? I'm talking about besides you. If you, you. Okay. We tend to exaggerate. It's so hot. Oh, the traffic is, it, 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 you know, everything. We got the, we, we're infected with the twin demons, drama and trauma. Everything is exaggerated and so on. And we just use all of these words to just make it, you know, and you need to just, and the Holy Spirit says, shut up. <laughs> if you can't say something that pleases God, don't say anything at all. Amen. Okay. Amen. You're not going to get a prize for, for, for being tortured by life. You know, there's no competition. Who's the most miserable? And it matters what you say. Say with me. It matters what I say. It matters the words I choose. 
talking about the guy, uh, his anniversary, and he went in, and he said something to his wife, and she slapped him. She said, get out of here. I can't stand it. I, I, I waited all day for you to say something romantic. You can come in here. You say something stupid to me. Get out the house until you come back and say something romantic. He walked around downtown. He saw a movie. Was in. He goes in. It happened to be a, a romantic movie, and he watches, and the guy is standing out on the back of a cruise ship, and the moon is in the back, and he looks out, and he said, baby, I just want you to know. When I gaze upon your face, I'm lost in the countenance of your looks. And I'm very eons of time come to a screeching halt, and there I am captivated in your beauty. He said, now that's romantic. So all the way home, when I look into your face and the eons of time, come to, and I'm captivated, and I'm caught, you know, and he walks in, he says, baby, you got a face that can stop a clock. <laughs> So you gotta, you gotta watch the words that you say. Same out. You know, you can tell your wife, baby, you look like the breath of spring, or you can say the end of a long, long hard winter. I mean, it's the same, it's the same thing. All right. All right, so our words have the power to bring life or death to our future relationships, our potentials, and our desires. Now, we have to come into agreement with the presence of God. Put that next one on there, Trey. I want you to see the end of it. To, to bring to life or death to our future relationships, potentials. Say with me, potential. Potential, potential is never what you've done. Potential is not what you're doing. Potential is always what can be done. So we have to start having agreement with the word of God with our mouth, speaking into something that is abstract, and we want to go to the level where we know it's impossible, okay? Because that's where the supernatural is, because only in that can you trust God. I had a pastor said uh, to me this week, he kept calling me up. He says, I'm hung up on this. I know God told me to do this. I said, well, why don't you do it? He said, because I'm just not clear on it. I said, well... When, you, when you're in doubt, you don't know, you don't do. Right. He said, well, why would God do that to me? I said, because faith, faith is free, but trust costs you. We don't like to be in the trust part right. because when we get, when the trust part, nothing's happening, so we start changing our words. Anybody here ever think that maybe you forfeited some potential because you didn't wait long enough with your confession and you changed your confession. Something sacred, creative, and powerful about the ability to speak chosen words. That is why it is so important to learn awareness to control our tongues. Our words are destructive or life-giving to our relationships to others, but especially to God. We're communicating to God only through our words, right? Not that long ago, maybe a couple of years ago, I had somebody grab me by the neck. He was really angry and so on. And uh, I, I knew I, had to, I needed to say something. And I had had a history all the way back to First Assembly where God gave me, me a supernatural word that didn't make any sense, that totally just delivered. As the guy grabbed me at First Assembly, he was going to, I'm going to go home and I'm going to kill your family. I'm going to burn your house down. He's going to do all this. And he's standing over me. And, and the Lord gave me a word. And I looked at it and said, you're an empty paper bag. And the guy just fell on the ground and wrote an offering check to me. Okay. These are supernatural words of the Father that come. But when you're in a prince. So here he was and I couldn't get a word. So I just looked him in the eyes and I just went, and the guy just melted like a candle and just walked off. So it wasn't that I threatened him. I spoke words that had some kind of agreement in the supernatural realm that, that over, overrode everything in the natural. Amen. So you want to be prepared all the time of, what is it you're about to say? Choose your words wisely because they will have a negative or a positive impact on your life, almost sometimes immediately. So words connect us to God. When God needed to bridge this, the, the, the separation 
uh, of sin to connect us back to him, what did he do? He sent his word into the world. He didn't send an angel. He sent his word into the, sp the mouth of God spoke a word that became the connection, overrid the, the unrighteousness of sin and connected us one with the Father, boldly able to come in. So in the beginning, the Bible says, was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So our connection to God is through who? The word, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, when we are in agreement with the word, Jesus Christ, everything that is in red, we can manifest the heart of the Father in the spiritual realm. Good. Or not. All right, God's word became flesh, the spiritual became the natural, and I call it the word bridge was described prophetically in Psalms 107.20. He sent his word and healed us and delivered us from how many of our destructions? Oh. All of our destructions. So if we find ourselves in debt, if we find ourselves with a bad diagnosis, if we find ourselves in a circumstance, we have a bridge over the river Kwai through the word of God, Amen. which transcends everything in the natural. Amen. Amen. I cried unto the Lord in a loud voice, Amen. and he heard me and delivered me from all of my destructions. But that has to be your testimony, and you can't dilute it with all of the chronic complaining, super energizing your negative circumstances, because you defile it. Right. Doubt defiles faith. So God continues to bridge the gap between us and himself through chosen words, and we connect ourselves to him through our chosen words. And we all know Romans 10 states the principle. And I want you to look at the mouth, word, call. These are all things that, that uh, the speaking spirit has to use. God continues to bridge it. The word is near you. Where is it? In your mouth. Where is it? In your heart. That is the word of faith which we proclaim. That you confess with your mouth. Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, for whoever calls upon the Lord will be saved. Confession is all we have. Let me go over it again. Confession of Christ is all we have, Amen. all the way to the point, even the unbeliever who refuses to accept Jesus Christ as the Son of God will bow the knee right. and will confess with their mouth Amen. that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Amen. Now, just like our confession of our mouth connects us to God, our confession of our mouth can disconnect us from God. Look at James 3, 6. The tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches among all the parts of the body, the tongue is a flaming fire. It is a whole world of wickedness. It pollutes and defiles your entire body. That's, that's us apart from our position in Christ. And we, if we don't say the words, we think the words, we feel the words, we imagine them. You would never say, I hope that woman that did me so wrong, I hope she dies in a car wreck. You might not say that. Come on, don't look at me like that. <laughs> the, the, every movie you ever watch is all about revenge. Every, it, any, any show you ever watch is all about it. We, we, love, we love the Falcons to get stomped. It's all about conquest. That's the human heart. Murder is in the heart of every human being. Okay. So our words... 
not only connect us to God, but our words can also disconnect us from God permanently. Why is that? Well, let's look at Matthew 12, 31, 32. Therefore, I say to you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven of men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven men. Anyone who speaks a word, a word, a word, a word, not a dissertation, a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him either in this age or in the age to come. Now, sin is already taken care of, but the words of your mouth carry quite a consequence, oh, yeah. negative or eternal. Now, every year I'll have people, when I say something like this, they'll come up to me like Nicodemus and say, oh, pray for me, I committed uh, the part unpardonable sin. I said, are you worried about it? They go, yeah, you definitely didn't do it. All right, because... The unpardonable sin is that I refuse to allow Jesus Christ to be Lord and Savior. I recognize who he is, but I am not submitted to him. So that's a transgression against the work of love. So Jesus was warning the Pharisees uh, about the unpardonable sin because they knew he was the Messiah. They had waited a thousand years. He, he, he fulfilled all the signs but they did not want him to be their boss, their king. Right. They didn't want to change what they were doing. And so because of that, they had an evil heart of unbelief. And he says to them, real Christian, brood of vipers. How can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil heart brings forth evil things. But I say to you that every idle word that men may speak, they will give an account. Now, not every sin, because sin is under the, under the blood. It's when you open your mouth, you're in trouble. Okay. What are you using it for? To glorify God or to destroy men? To agree with God or to disagree with God? For by your words you will be justified and by your words you will be condemned. So becoming aware of the power of words to connect or disconnect us from God and others brings a peaceful reconciliation. But we can... We can thank God for his words as in 1 John 1, 9. If we confess, you have to speak words to confess, then God cleanses you, but you have to speak it. You can't just, uh, you know, in your heart, Lord, forgive me for what I did. You have to speak it out so that you, you, you hear your spirit speaking, connecting to God, and you're cleansed from all all unrighteousness. Okay. Here's another thing. If a guy's caught in uh, an adulterous affair or gambling or addiction or pornography, he can confess, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm in a bondage here. I'm in sin. I can't help myself. And God will cleanse him from all unrighteousness. But he's not out the trap. Liberty only comes by him humbling himself by going to somebody and saying, Brother Alex, man, I beg, ask God to forgive me, and I know I'm forgiven, but I'm caught in a trap. I can't be made whole. That grace, James 4, 6, will come upon you to deliver you. Forgiveness is guaranteed. Deliverance is not. Come on, Amen. Amen. All right. All right. I think people with lung cancer in the hospital should reconcile themselves to God, said, I, out of ignorance, I smoked all my life. I knew all the packages said this thing will kill me. Now I have lung cancer, so I'm going to humble myself and agree with God that, that I, was, I was in. But, but instead, they harden their heart and they die. Yes. Right. Come on, that's good, sir. Yeah. That's good. Just say it. So we must purposely stop speaking death over our health, our finances, our marriages, Amen. our relationships, our futures. We should consciously speak words in agreement with the word of God. Amen. And we must remember that our words are either connecting bridges or breaking down connections, destroying personal potential. 
If we raise our standard in choosing our words, our marriages will become stronger, our families and ministries will get better, and our circumstances will greatly improve. Now, when Elaine, when Elaine was giving me all the scriptures to the disciple, the one that I loved was Ephesians 4.29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of my mouth, but only the words that I speak that will lift up, edify somebody who happens to hear. If I guard my mouth like that, I'll have life, I'll have liberty. So the power of chosen conversation is not only to say the right words at the right times in the right places to the right people, but to leave the wrong words unsaid in the most tempting. I, uh, Elaine will tell you, I, uh, because I'm provoked, I, I've had a problem with being provoked easily, and I, I, I just go past go, you know, shoot, I'm there. <laughs> And so I will sit there sometimes and say, okay, agree with me that I will not be provoked. That when they say something or they look at me in a certain way or whatever, that, that I, what I really want to say and what I really want to do, I'm not going to do. I'm going to reckon myself. But, it, but it's a discipline I have to practice. I just want you to know. <laughs> so leave me alone. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So we can determine our future quality of life and witness by the words that we speak. Would you stand real quick? Great Commission Fellowship invites you to our Fall Ministers Conference, Incomprehensible Belief, this October 4th, 5th, and 6th at White Dove Fellowship, 3600 Manhattan Boulevard, Harvey, Louisiana. Visit our website, whitedove.org forward slash GCF to register today.